In 2028, America will host one of the world's biggest sporting events, the Summer Olympics in LA. And for that, the US has taken on a major project. They're building a high-speed train from Las Vegas, Nevada to Rancho Cucamonga, California, which lies just east of Los Angeles. The US is once again trying to build a high-speed railway, but can they pull it off this time? And with only three years to go, will it be done on schedule? Let's find out. Imagine a route that's just over 350 kilometers or 218 miles long, with 96% of it running right down the middle of Interstate 15. It all begins in Las Vegas, where the first station will sit between I-15 and the well-known Las Vegas Boulevard, close to the Strip. Next, the line heads southwest to Apple Valley's Victor Valley Station in San Bernardino County. After that, there's a planned Hesperia station to help people in the high desert travel quickly to the Greater Los Angeles area. The final station, called the Southern California Station, will be in Rancho Cucamonga, near Ontario International Airport. This spot already connects to Metrolink, so travelers can easily reach downtown LA and other parts of Southern California. Right now, driving from the Las Vegas Strip to Rancho Cucamonga can take about 3 hours and 40 minutes if traffic is good. But with this high-speed train traveling at more than 320 kilometers per hour, or about 200 miles per hour, the trip would take only 2 hours and 10 minutes. If it's built, Brightline West would become the nation's first true high-speed passenger rail. For decades, leaders in Nevada and California have looked for ways to link their states with a high-speed train. Back in the 1990s, they even talked about a maglev line running from Las Vegas to Anaheim in Orange County, California. In 2005, a company called Desert Express, later renamed Express West, came together to develop, build and operate this rail project. But they never secured federal funds or finished an environmental impact study, so the plan never moved forward. Still, the dream of connecting these two popular regions didn't fade. In 2018, Brightline, the passenger rail company known for its Florida service, bought Express West. By the following year, under the new name Brightline West, the company announced plans for a non-maglev direct route between Las Vegas and Victor Valley in Southern California. According to Brightline West, this high-speed rail service will use all-electric, zero-emission trains. They'll run on power provided through an overhead catenary system, which delivers a steady flow of clean energy. This electricity will come from large solar farms out in the Nevada desert, because of that, traveling between Vegas and California could become much greener than flying or driving. Right now, around 50 million trips happen between these states each year, and 85% of them are by car. Brightline West thinks their train could reduce road traffic by over 1.1 billion kilometers, or about 700 million vehicle miles a year, cutting carbon emissions by up to 400,000 metric tons. They also hope this train will help people in nearby areas who can't afford to move closer to their jobs or spend hours on the road every day. This zero-emission railway isn't just part of Nevada's and California's plan to lower their climate impact, it also promises a simpler way to travel between the two states. For example, in July 2024, a truck carrying lithium-ion batteries crashed on Interstate 15, sparking a huge fire and causing a major road closure for almost two days. Offering a reliable alternative, like this high-speed train, could make a real difference in situations like that. Passengers on this seven-car train will get free Wi-Fi and comfortable seats. For travelers wanting a bit more room, the premium cars will be bigger, and there will even be a bar and party car for those looking to have some fun. Siemens Mobility plans to build these trains in 2026 at a new factory in upstate New York. With the Summer Olympics coming in less than four years, you're probably wondering how far along construction is. Work on the tracks and the overhead power lines started in April 2024, and Brightline West hopes to finish within four years, just in time to welcome Olympic visitors. If that schedule holds, fans flying into Los Angeles could hop on the train in Rancho Cucamonga and zip over to Vegas for a quick getaway. For now, crews are hard at work in California's Mojave Desert, between Hesperia and Mountain Pass. 
In early October 2024, they also began site surveys and soil checks at seven spots along the I-15 in southern Nevada. This project will need more than 160 structures like bridges and viaducts and a main maintenance facility covering nearly 19,000 square meters in Sloan, Nevada. That site will handle all the train's upkeep and operations. Though there's a lot left to do, the company isn't too worried. They say that because it's a private project and not a government one, things can move faster. Brightline West's Las Vegas high-speed rail carries a price tag of around $12 billion, with $9 billion coming from private investors and $3 billion awarded by the Biden administration in 2023 as part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. But even solid funding can run into challenges when federal leadership changes. So California Governor Gavin Newsom recently headed to Washington, D.C. to lobby for continued backing. Different news outlets have their own slant on this development. Fox News, for instance, emphasizes his efforts to make the project, quote, Trump-proof, while the Associated Press describes his actions in a more neutral, proactive light. As for whether the Brightline West project is worth its lofty price, it could dramatically cut travel times between Las Vegas and Southern California, especially during the 2028 Summer Olympics, and help relieve congestion on Interstate 15. Beyond the convenience for tourists and residents, its construction is expected to generate more than 35,000 jobs, with another 1,000 permanent positions once it's up and running. The railway is also aimed at reducing carbon emissions, potentially replacing the output of roughly 16,000 short-haul flights each year. With the target of reaching 100% emission-free operation by 2045, Brightline West hopes to show that large-scale infrastructure can benefit both the economy and the environment if it can stay on track and on budget. Though the Brightline West project seems promising, it does face a few hurdles. One involves a federal lawsuit from Alstom, which produces Amtrak trains on the East Coast. Alstom claims it should have won the contract over Siemens Mobility because it followed the Buy America Act by building trains entirely in its US factory, while Siemens was granted a waiver and will manufacture the first two trains in Germany before its New York facility is ready in 2026. Even so, Brightline West has already secured full environmental approval and since it's a private venture relying on union labor, there isn't as much risk of red tape or labor disputes slowing things down. The bigger question is whether the project will be completed on time, especially when other high-speed rail efforts in the US have stalled. California's high-speed rail, meant to connect Los Angeles and San Francisco in under three hours by 2020, ran into ballooning costs, shifting routes, and a price tag now estimated at over $100 billion. Compared to that, the Texas high-speed railway proposal, expected to cost $30 billion, is still in an early study phase, so Brightline West is further along by comparison. If Brightline West is successful, it could become the country's first true high-speed rail service, cutting travel time between Las Vegas and Southern California to just over two hours. The hope is that a quick four-year construction window will help keep spending in check. Future expansions may reach from Rancho Cucamonga all the way into Los Angeles Union Station, removing the need for a Metrolink connection, and could even stretch to Palmdale and eventually tie into California's high-speed rail system, allowing one continuous trip from Las Vegas to San Francisco. Whether the project is a wise use of resources or not remains open to debate. Some argue that America needs more high-speed rail lines, while others believe the money could be better spent elsewhere. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time at Ultimate Mega Builds.